don't want him anymore. We who, first of all. It kind of creates this illusion that being trans, also being gay, is like a costume or a performance that can be done. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great. Have any of you seen the show Heartstopper? I was gonna make a video on it at one point, but I never ended up doing it. However, there's been some drama. There's been some tea with the Heartstopper cast. Kid Collins plays a character in Heartstopper. And even though I haven't really seen the show, I do know who he is because I recently saw this tweet. Back for a minute. I'm by. Congrats for forcing an 18 year old to out himself. I think some of you missed the point of the show. Bye, bye girl. So dramatic, sorry, it's not dramatic, it's reasonable. So I did a little bit of digging and apparently people were accusing Mr. Kit Collins of queer baiting. Personally, this sounds very familiar. The whole, this person's queer baiting, this person's queer baiting, blah, 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 blah. A little while back, they were saying that Billie Eilish was queer baiting. I made a video on that if you're, you know, looking for a video to watch. <laughs> but here this word is yet again, being applied to a real life person, but now it's having like bad consequences. Tell me some bad consequences. For real though, this is not good. Not good at all. For today's video, we're gonna be talking about queer baiting. We're gonna be talking about how queer baiting interacts with real life people or how real life people interact with queer baiting. And I think we should talk about this tweet a little bit. I post videos twice a week here on my channel, so make sure to subscribe if you are not already and you would like to be. Go ahead, go ahead and do that right now. I'll wait for you, go ahead. Are you done? Thank you very much. Make sure to follow me over on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all these different places to keep as up to date with me as possible. And yeah, with no further ado, let's get right into today's video. So I did talk about queer baiting a little bit in my video that I made last week, the week before on Little Miss Velma when she came out as gay. But I do wanna quickly talk about what queer baiting means again, because some people seem to have forgotten. Queer baiting is a marketing technique. I'm reading notes, girl. Queer baiting is a marketing technique for fiction and entertainment in which LGBT romance is hinted at, but not depicted. And this is an attempt to attract that queer audience, you know, draw gay people or trans people, whoever, LGBTQ people in. Babe, we know what you're doing. Because of course we want to see ourselves represented and we want to see ourselves, our stories in shows. So they kind of hint at it, make us think that there might be an LGBT romance because it keeps us watching. Queer baiting is usually, in my opinion, not a great thing, especially in today's day and age, you know, because I feel like it's a lot more acceptable for shows to depict LGBT romances and be explicit about it. So when they're not explicit about it, it just kind of is like, what are you doing? Like it's 2022. Back in the day, like when Miss Velma came out, like I was talking about in my last video, it's a little bit more acceptable in my opinion because you know, they did what they had to do to get these stories told. Wait a minute. So one example of queer baiting, this used to be my favorite show. So I'm excited to share it with you guys. I'm sure a lot of my audience knows the show Supernatural. I feel like it was a very, I don't know. It's just like our kind of thing, you know? And so if you know Dean and Castiel, from Supernatural, they were always kind of, I mean, people thought that they were together. People thought that they were together so much so that Misha Collins, the person who played Castiel, who was only supposed to be in three episodes, but they extended him because people loved him so much. Well, they didn't just love him. They loved his relationship with Dean. And I mean, can you blame them? <laughs> Castiel would say things like Dean was his favorite human and it was love at first stab. Just like things that are just very much like a little fruity. <laughs> but it wasn't until the very last season, that, spoiler alert. I think it wasn't until the second to last episode where they kind of confirmed it. Castiel right before his death, again, spoiler alert. Castiel right before his death, like professed his love for Dean. I, I've never seen the episode. I stopped watching because I mean, 15 seasons is a lot. Right. <laughs> What a waste. It took them 15 seasons. It took them until the very end of the series to finally confirm that they were actually dating. <laughs> they were not dating. That's not what I meant to say. That they actually had something, you know, between them. You know, Castiel actually felt something for Dean. But people did not care. You know, for them, it was a little bit too late. And this is what I mean when I'm saying that people don't really like queer baiting anymore because it's like, why? Like, stop. <laughs> this person said, the queer baiting just got ridiculous. You couldn't pretend they weren't doing it on purpose anymore. It wasn't, well, there's some subtext it was like oh my god this is never going to pay off and you're doing it to keep me here this person said it almost read like they were making fun of the fans saying you want this well you can't have it and personally i understand that you know like just, just do it i don't want to wait anymore just like show them kiss or something i don't know maybe that's just me being impatient because i'm also the type of person to binge watch a show because i just want to know what happens i just want to know how things unfold duh but this is what queer baiting has meant from like you know its origin it was a technique used by show producers writers stuff like that to draw in an audience to make money but recently i feel like queer baiting has kind of taken a different meaning at least people are using it in a different way we've seen it applied to and even thrown at like real life celebrities 
celebrity. Like I said, Billie Eilish made that music video for Lost Cause in which she was dancing around with her friends and like cuddling and PJs and stuff like that. And people were accusing her of queer baiting. I personally did have a hard time calling it queer baiting, but I know that some other people really did think that it was queer baiting or that it had like a queer baiting vibe to it at least. But if you want a perspective from somebody that, you know, is a woman who actually is attracted to women who may have a different perspective, there's definitely some, I think the queer Kiwi made one. I think Christina Mayoni made one. So yeah, go check them out. For me, I had a hard time calling it queer baiting because one, like she's a singer. She's not a character in a TV show. Like she's real life. She's not fiction. Oh my God. I know. You could argue that, you know, since it's in a music video, it's a form of entertainment. So yeah, that's valid. But to me, queer baiting is a consistent like teasing of the audience. You know what I mean? It's like something that's repetitive to the point of being like annoying, like we saw with Supernatural. So again, not only is she not a character in a TV show, but it's not something that she's continuously doing over and over and over again. It was just that one music video and that was it. For that reason, I don't really think it's fair to put that label on her. And that's why in that original video I made, I said it, I didn't think it was fair. But even if we were to throw this queer baiting word at Billy or eat like at Kit, like we're seeing, what are we trying to accomplish? <laughs> when we throw this queer baiting term at TV shows and at characters on TV shows, we can hold somebody responsible. We can hold the writers and people like that responsible because it's like, just give it to us. You know what I mean? Like, you know the tea and it's not like this big coming out thing that you have to do. And it's not like this personal thing. It's a character, like they're not even real. When we hold real life people accountable like this, it forces people to come out like we're seeing. I feel like our community is pretty understanding of people when they, you know, aren't ready to come out. We tell our loved ones and our friends, our family, people like that, that coming out is our own journey. It's our own personal thing to do. That it should only be done on our own terms, on our own time to the people that we choose to come out to. Why are we suddenly not extending that same graciousness to celebrities? But also what are we telling people when we claim that they're queer baiting when they just show a little bit of like sexual fluidity or anything like that? <laughs> like with Billie Eilish, it's not like she was making out with other girls or like in a relationship she was dancing around with like 10 other girls like in pajamas playing twister like it, it was like maybe a little bit i mean i don't i wouldn't even call it sexual honestly don't we think that straight women should be allowed to express some fluidity with their friends or don't we think that straight men should be able to express themselves and maybe explore their sexuality without defining it thanks i thought that's what this was all about personally and i think that most of us think that people should not be forced to come out duh but yet here we are again this tweet from kit Connor says, back for a minute, I'm by. Congrats for forcing an 18 year old to out himself. I think some of you missed the point of the show. Bye. <laughs> I love the bye because he's bye, get it? Oh. So if you don't know who Kit Connors is, he plays Nick Nelson in the show Heartstopper, like I said, and the show is a very, very popular show with our community. Obviously, you know, it has a lot of gay representation, LGBT representation, so people love it for a good reason. It's a great show. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I'm like, it's a great show. But I think because of how much our community loved this show, I think it might have set Kit Connor up for failure in a way because people kind of looked up to him as this gay icon. And so when he was seen in these pictures with a girl, people freaked out. We started seeing tweets like this one saying, okay, you make out with men on Netflix, then get mad when people think you're gay. The math isn't mathing. <laughs> you silly, silly queer her. This one is like intense though. It says, at Alice Osman, I think this is like the producer or some Remove Kit Connor from Heartstopper now. No. He doesn't deserve to be on that show. He's just another white cis straight man who gives the show a bad name and takes advantage of all of us. We don't want him anymore. We who, first of all. <laughs> you know, let me, I get it. I get it. I understand somewhat. Yeah. I get it. LGBT representation in media is often horrible. It's often bad, right? In the past, we frequently saw non-trans, non-gay, non-LGBTQ people playing us in horrible ways. So I guess for some people, it can be a trigger. Understandably so, like I'm saying. Of course, we wanna uplift our community and have actors who are LGBT play us on screen because one, you know, it gives those actors opportunities that they may not have. And two, we just get it better. Let me just say that we just understand it better. But also in a way, in my opinion, I feel like when straight people or when cis people play gay or trans people, it kind of creates this illusion that being trans, especially, but also being gay is like a costume or a performance that can be done. When in reality, it's much deeper than that. It's just who we are. You can't like pretend or you can't like play a 
gay i don't know it's just a weird thing to me so obviously we want lgbtq people playing us in media that's all of that was just to say that <laughs> but all of that being said when people were accusing kit of queer baiting and you know we didn't know his sexuality we saw a picture of him holding hands with one of his co-stars we're gonna assume that he's straight this is it's just so ironic to me because the people that are upset about this are like fans of the show so like have y'all been paying attention like mr kit said have y'all missed the point of the show in the show we see one of the characters being outed and we see them bullied and we see the effects that it has on their mental health. The literal theme of the show is about not putting people in boxes and stereotyping them when they're trying to figure themselves out. But now here we are doing the thing that our favorite show says not to do. The thing that the show that you are defending is saying not to do. I personally do feel bad for Kit. He fortunately was shown a lot of support from this tweet when he came out, but still, he shouldn't have had to do that. It's just sad. It's just very, very sad. Coming out should be like a happy thing, in my opinion. It should feel like a weight lifted off of you, and I can't imagine that this was a pleasant experience for Kit at all. So yeah, I don't know. I just think that we need to not do that anymore. What do you guys think? Has this whole queer baiting thing gone too far? Has it not gone far enough? Personally, I think that we should keep the queer baiting accusations to characters in TV shows. Maybe a movie character? even but definitely leave the celebs alone but okay you guys i hope you like this video if you did like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up down below make sure to comment make sure to subscribe if you're not already and you would like to be all that kind of stuff but yeah other than that i think i'm going to go so thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye everyone